All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. We're so happy that you are on with this incredible event. A huge thank you to PGBS for hosting and everyone that's participating. My name is Bree Jensen, and I'm the Outreach and Partnership Officer for Pepperdine Graduate School of Education and Psychology. So I represent um, the psych programs, the education programs, as well as our social impact program. Um, and I'm on with two incredible women here, and I'd love to share their bios before we start talking about some tips and tricks on how to present your best application for private schools. Um, we have Stephanie on, if she wants to give a little wave. <laughs> Stephanie Ortiz Garcia, um, she's the Assistant Director of Admissions. Stephanie has been an admissions counselor at the University of San Francisco for five years. She's originally from Southeast Los Angeles and moved to San Francisco to attend USF. She is the class of 2016, and she has recently become a double don since receiving her master's degree um, in 2021. Congratulations. That's so exciting. Her experience is in um, identity and unmasking of education uh, inequities impacted her commitment to social and racial justice and making higher education accessible to all. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to hear your perspective on all the things. <laughs> um, we also have Hannah Mojuelo here. Um, meet Hannah. She's the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Advising at the Grazia Dio Business School at Pepperdine University. Hannah has 17 years of higher education recruitment experience. She is originally from the Philippines, where she graduated from the University of Asia and the Pacific with her BA in Business Administration. And she's currently pursuing her MS in Org Behavior here at Pepperdine. Um, so happy to have both of you. Hannah and I go way back. Uh, we were colleagues just a few months ago. We're still colleagues here at Pepperdine, big one family. Um, so I know she has all the tips and tricks for all of you. Um, and then Stephanie, what a fascinating mission. I, um, you know, I'm very socially conscious and I cannot wait about hearing kind of your perspective on things. Um, before we get started, if all of you that are out there in the virtual world don't mind sharing in the chat, we just would love to test the chat and see where you're joining us from. Um, you can either, you know, put in parent from so-and-so area or counselor from so-and-so or student, whatever it is, we'd love to just see where you're at and participate virtually. That would be great. Um, so let's get the conversation started. Um, Hannah, I'm going to toss this one to you. Do you have just right off the bat your like number one thing? I know here at Pepperdine, we really have that one on one touch when we work with students. And what's like the one thing when you're speaking with somebody who's looking to transfer into our undergrad program um, that you tell them about their application? Uh, don't procrastinate. <laughs> What? <laughs> because, you know, um, especially when people know that there's a, you know, a deadline and they they think, oh, you know what, that's two two months away or it's three months away. And then in a blink of an eye, you know, they're calling me right on the day of deadline. And I know <laughs> Stephanie's like nodding and they're like, C can I still put this in? I haven't ordered my transcript. So please do not procrastinate. And Bree knows this because we've worked with tons of, you know, working professionals as prospective students and life happens and you're thinking, oh, I have that time to, you know, to do that essay or I have that time to order my transcripts. And then a week before a deadline, you're like, oh, you know what? My school can't produce the transcript. I have international transcripts somewhere. And, you know, I, I, my letter of recommendation hasn't come in from my supervisor. Tons of things happen. So please don't procrastinate. Absolutely. And I think that's like a huge to anyone out there. I see some people in the chat that are saying they're counselors. They're like, yes, please don't procrastinate. Um, what's that saying? Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today, right? Just get her done. <laughs> um, Stephanie, I would love to ask you, um, it sounds like you really see people for their story and who they are and where they've come from. Um, 
I kind of want to ask you just what motivates you and your mission for education equity, as well as how that can apply to people's essays. Definitely. So I think what really first got me really interested in thinking about how different people experience the world differently, um, really, really related to identity. So whether racial identity um, or whether gender, um, whatever it may be. And so for me, it was always a part of my life, thinking about myself as a first generation um, Latina and thinking about how do I walk the world in comparison to other folks and what can I learn from other people? And so through these stories, you know, there's such incredible stories of students who really share very personal um, times and moments in their life that have really shaped who they are. Um, and I think it's so special that we get to read, you know, that and that they put time and effort into it. And so I think that's something that I always appreciate and always try to take something away from those personal statements, you know, something that I can think about and ruminate about. Um, and so I think for students who are really thinking about what to talk about in their personal statements and their short responses to really draw from those lived experiences, uh, but really trying to have a balance between not necessarily feeling like you have to share, you know, trauma or, you know, sad necessarily stories. We love reading about joyful stories. We love reading about accomplishments and success and maybe passions, interests. And so I think really trying to show that um, in a very healthy way is something that is really um, something I tell students all the time and making sure they feel secure in that. So definitely intertwined with my interests. And that was something I also studied in grad school a lot. So I think it really just um, is really, I'm really fortunate to have the spaces to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's really good to share your story, but, you know, just do it in a very authentic way. Um, you know, with essay from our experience, we would see like the whole gamut where it looked like people were blogging or, you know, it was, it was maybe heavy on personal story, but we do like to see like a glimpse of who you are. But then Hannah, I'm going to toss it to you because I'm thinking of, you know, some of the essays that are heavy in story, like and lack that of what you're talking about, Stephanie, of like where you want to go and like what you want to do with this degree. Can you share a little bit more of like the meat of the essay, Hannah? Yeah. So especially, so it's, it's actually nice because Stephanie can talk about, you know, the high school application essay part. And I'm more of the transfer from a community college um, essay part. So uh, because I represent the business school, what our committee is really looking for is your business skills. You know, the resume is actually part of our application requirement, but speak about your business skills apart from what we see on your essay. Um, we'd love to, you know, get to know you, uh, share your story, definitely. But are applying to let's just say a specific major for us it's business we'd like to see the meat to be what have you done as far as you know um you know your achievements your career where are you going with this degree what why do you need it you know what do you how do you see yourself in five years with a business degree from Pepperdine so that's what we're looking for yeah, those are great tips and and definitely have it proofread. <laughs> maybe maybe a couple times um you know, especially when you're staring at an essay or any writing for so long, you start to kind of just see words all blurring together, so it's good to have a second set of eyes is what I would say. Um have you guys seen any I I'm recently seeing people doing like video cover letters, which I think is kind of cool and maybe for a younger generation. Stephanie, you working with high school students and things like that. Are you seeing any, I mean, probably don't want to like replace because we want to see that people can write and communicate that way. Um, but have you seen any kind of like video or creative ways that people are submitting? Um, so no, I actually haven't, uh, not necessarily in the different kinds of mediums, but I have noticed um, an increase across the years that I've been at USF is that um, a lot of the students will submit uh, different like portfolios or they'll submit links to maybe the YouTube channels um, or maybe, you know, drop a Vimeo uh, video project. And so it's really cool to see students who really want to show us a glimpse of their art, of their work, of their passions through that. Um, so I've definitely seen more of students sharing those kinds of uh, forms of medium of media, but overall, I haven't really seen that yet in the personal like essay um, writing, but definitely see a lot of students more engaged with different types of media. 
So cool. I love it. Um, so moving on to extracurricular activities, um, plus minus, what kind of activities do you all think are helpful to an application? Um, Stephanie, let's go back to you on this one to start us off. Definitely. So I always tell students, because um, I think sometimes students, uh, the college application process is so stressful. And so I think a lot of students really tend to overthink um, and really just stress themselves out in terms of thinking, what do I do? What can I do to really stand out? And so for extracurriculars, I always tell students, we just really want to see what you're passionate about, what you're interested in. Um, we'd love to see students who sometimes channel and already know what kind of major they're interested in and find that they want to volunteer at a clinic or maybe you want to do yeah. some research. So I think it's all about the students showing us who they are through those activities. Um, and I always tell students that it's really quality over quantity. Um, you know, a lot of times they, they think that I have to have at least 10 different activities listed on my Common App for me to even be competitive. And a lot of the times I love seeing students who have, you know, three solid extracurriculars who they've been with them for, you know, a few months. They go there regularly, you know, once a week uh, versus having 10 activities and you may only go to each one, you know, once or twice a month. Um, and so I think that's something that I always tell students so that they feel a little bit of that comfort and knowing, okay, great, I just have to really be myself um, and show them what I'm interested in um, and really just kind of finding that balance between school um, and extracurriculars. That's a really good point, Stephanie. I, today's like the saying day for me for some reason, but I'm thinking of that saying, jack of all trades, master of none, you know? I think that's something I have to remind myself of too. It's so good to find that focus. Experiment with what you like, but but have some focus on your application. That's great. And then Hannah, speaking of people that are coming from community college, I mean, some of them have multiple jobs and they're thinking, how in the world am I going to volunteer? Like, what, what's your suggestion? Can they also have, or maybe they can use like some of their work experience on their application. Um, do you have any tips? Definitely. So what I usually uh, tell our prospective students, especially the ones that have, you know, multiple um, years of work experience from different industries, you know, not just um, you know, you know, when you submit a resume, it, it entails the daily duties, you know, as far as the application is concerned, don't list the daily duties, list what you've achieved in each function. Mm -hmm. So it's very different from an, uh, you know, at Seaver College where they would, uh, Seaver College, by the way, is our traditional uh, campus in Malibu for the high school um, applications. Seaver, they do look at, you know, community involvement and they look at, you know, your high school activities and what you do for volunteer work. Um, we do the same uh, for, you know, the transfer students who are working professionals. We also take a look at your, you know, your volunteer work if you have any. But like, you know, Bree said, do I have even time to do that? So instead of focusing on volunteer work, focus on on your resume. If you have anything that, you know, stands out was were you awarded, you know, um, some kind of employee of the year or quarter or made goal or whatnot or implemented a process that made everything smooth and X, Y, you know, profit. So things like that. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Um, I think that it's important to really highlight your strengths and there's lots in there. Um, moving on to letters of recommendation. Um, some schools are asking the, for these, some are um, requiring them. I know that I've seen people submit letters of recommendation working with grad students from like 15 years prior. Um, and I think it's important to make sure that they're current and that they apply to what you're applying for. Um, what do you think, Hannah? Definitely current and it relates to what you're applying for. I've seen recommendation letters where you already know it's a blanket recommendation letter and it's not even tailored to the school. It's not even tailored to the business school. Like it's tailored for a job or it's tailored for an interview. So definitely have something that is tailored to what you're applying for, mm -hmm. you know, what school, what major, um, have it current especially on our end, you know, we'd like to see some something from either your supervisor or your, you know, your peers at work, or if even if it's from Seaver College, something that 
was related to where you volunteered or, you know, how you were involved in a church or something like that. So not, not something that was, you know, 10 years ago and doesn't apply to what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. I think of an application as a portfolio of introduction. Like how do you want to be presented to the thing that you want to get into? Right. So there's a lot of opportunity in applications that say like optional. Well, to me, that means do it, <laughs> you know, like just, just do it, present your best face and, and what's your brand identity? Like, who are you and what are you putting out um, to the school of choice is what I would say. Stephanie, um, definitely add to that if you have anything, but also I'm curious working with high schoolers um, during COVID is such an interesting time to apply to schools. And some schools are waiving SAT, ACT, other, you know, grad schools are waiving, um, GMAT, GRE, other things. Do you have any insight into what is happening with test scores? Definitely. So this actually um, ties in perfectly with letters of recommendation as well, where we've seen definitely a trend amongst uh, students who are coming from high school, going to college for the first time, as well as transfer students, where um, we have letters of recommendation are optional from a point of access and equity, where specifically, you know, looking at high school students as an example, if they don't have access to a counselor, because they may have a high school counselor who has 500 students to the one counselor and they may not have that close relationship could be a disadvantage with a, you know, in comparison to a student who may go to a private, you know, high school and maybe a counselor there has 30 students, you know, to one counselor and has a little bit more of that time to uh, be able to write them a glowing letter of recommendation. So that kind of also applies to test scores where we had seen um, different kinds of research and trends where it really shows that uh, a test score is not really the best indicator in terms of how well a student will do in higher education. Um, and so we definitely thought about it from an access and equity point of, you know, how can we reduce the barriers to higher education? Um, and one way to do that is going test optional. So I think a lot of different, um, you know, schools are thinking about going permanently test optional after the pandemic, because I know for sure right now, because they don't have access to uh, taking the SAT or the ACT, they can't submit them. But I think a lot of universities have taken the time to think, okay, how can we, you know, sustain this? And how can we really truly be test optional. So I think that's something that we're seeing across the board. And I always tell students when we mean test optional, we truly mean it. Um, and I think that's something that really reassures students because there's been such a culture of really having, you know, placing such a weight on the SAT and the ACT. So really exciting to move towards being test optional across the board um, and finding other ways to really determine, you know, how potentially successful a student will be in college. Yeah, Stephanie, I love that, making it equitable, because sometimes it can just be that stumbling block. How do I even get access to this test? Or how do I study for it? Or, you know, it, I just love that so much, your perspective. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love to connect with you about tips on how to make their educational process more equitable. So um, feel free to share your LinkedIn or whatever you'd like. Um, so there was a question that came in and I want to get the ball rolling on asking questions. So please use the discussion board to ask your questions. We have about 10 more minutes, so I'd love to get to those questions. Um, and one question that came in from Camila, she's wondering if Pepperdine requires letters of recommendation. Um, across Pepperdine, a lot of them, it depends on the program. Um, a lot of them are recommendation optional, but like I said, um, optional means just do it. <laughs> um, and so that's my answer to that. And for those of you, and maybe give me a shout out, like say hi in the chat that are counselors and maybe you're thinking of going back and getting a doctoral degree or a psych degree, um, something along those lines. I'd love to connect as well. As far as the graduation application into something like a psychology degree or the doctoral programs go, it's just like um, applying for a job, really. It's putting together that that portfolio and the essay is, is really what counts. So um, private schools, and I'll let you guys chime in on this. Um, what I love about private schools, since we are talking about private schools here, is 99.9% .9 of the time you get that personal attention from day one with an advisor and you get to talk through your story and we can help you through the process. Um, so that being said, when do you start reaching out to the schools of your choice and who do you reach out to? Hannah? 
uh, like Bree said, uh, we do admission um, recruitment advisors for each prospective student for different schools. Uh, for the business school, and I put my information on the chat already, you can definitely reach out to me and, you know, a team of recruiters for the Bachelor of Science and Management program. If you're interested, we also have Seaver, um, our booth for Seaver College is on here as well. So if you guys would like to visit the booth, we do have Michael as a representative that can chat with you over there. Um, we also have Bree here for the Graduate School of Education and Psychology. And we have, for those who are interested in an MBA, go to the booth for the Grazia Business School and you can reach out to Bethany and Debbie. So they're there to help anyone who's interested and anyone who has any questions. Awesome. And then a question came in about wondering if application fees are students. Um, they were asking specifically about Pepperdine, but Stephanie, do you see that, and we can ask answer as well about Pepperdine, but do you see that um, across the board in admissions, or is there a way that people can request that? Typically, um, most students who qualify for free reduced lunch um, or who have a certain family income um, at a certain point will be eligible for a fee waiver through the common application. Um, so really great for students who are wanting to apply to multiple schools. They'll find that already as they're filling that out typically towards the end. Um, and I would say a lot of institutions have really tried to think about this pandemic and how can we help um, students and encourage them to apply because there were so many conversations about the financial um, kind of aspect of higher education and how a lot of families did, you know, experience, um, you know, financial loss during this pandemic. And so I think a lot of colleges and universities are thinking, you know, how can we, you know, increase the access for students overall. So I think a lot of universities, if you're, if you're not seeing it in the common app, typically they'll have it somewhere on their website as well. So I always encourage students to email, um, whether it's the uh, general like admission email, or sometimes if you just find someone on the team, just email them and they'll always forward it to the correct team member. So just find someone to email in admission and we'll definitely give you um, the tools you need to find that fee waiver. That's awesome. And I think for those of you that are looking, you know, at private school thinking, oh my gosh, how could I do this? Um, most people feel that way. Um, there's, there's a lot, start doing digging, reach out to the schools. There's lots of opportunity for different scholarships, both within the schools as well as outside the schools. So I just want to encourage you, um, you know, it's not necessarily a barrier. And then lots of questions coming in. Um, so I'm just going to fire them out. Um, how many schools should I apply for and what application system to use? Either one of you can just fire the answers on these. So we, so for Seaver College in Malibu, we use the Common App. And then for the Grasso Dio Business School, we use Business Cast. And then to address the question on the low income uh, waiver, um, just like Stephanie said, we do have um, options to waive. Uh, whether you're a veteran, low income or whatnot. Um, if you attend an application workshop, which is we have one on, on, on Friday for the business school, we get to waive your um, application fee. On a normal basis, you would have to pay the application fee, but then we can help you waive the deposit. So we're, there are different things that private schools can do for you. Um, it might not be, you know, tailored to, you know, uh, you know, uh, one person or one, but you can reach out, um, like Stephanie said and Bree said, because we have individuals who might be veterans, low income, whatnot, and it depends on, you know, your situation. So we might help waive the the waive. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, deposit or the application fee. We'll help you, however we can. Awesome. And then some questions are coming in about the uh, letters of recommendation. I'm going to group these two questions together. One is wondering, what if you can only come up with one recommendation? Is that okay? Um, and then kind of like, what's the max amount that you would want to send in? 
Typically, a lot of universities, um, if they require for you to send in a letter or if you're thinking about it, even if they are um, optional, I would say one is usually pretty good, especially if you're asking someone who's a high school counselor, or teacher, or maybe if you're a transfer student, maybe a professor that you've had for um, a term and you got to know them really well, or maybe sometimes a job supervisor, community service supervisor. So different ways um, to really figure out like who can write you a letter that can really um, talk about your leadership or your growth or your skills. Um, and typically, I want to say I've heard like the maximum at most schools are going to be two, usually two or three. Um, I, I would say that, you know, more than two, we won't read. So whichever two that you really want us to consider, definitely send those. But I would say definitely maximum two. That's great. Um, so I don't see any more. Oh, yep. One just popped in. Let's see. Oh, it was Hannah. Thank you for answering that question. Hannah. Um, I don't see any questions coming in, but you have our contact info. I'm going to put mine in as well. If any of you are interested in talking more about education and psychology. And then we have a social entrepreneurship and change master's program um, that I'm in. I'm going to my second year and I love it a lot. So if you want to chat about that program, it's I, I nicknamed it um, the social impact program because that's really what we learn about. I'm gonna put my info in there and then we do have a booth. Kelly's over in that booth. So feel free to jump into that booth and, sh and chat with them. Um, but before we go, I have a gift for all of you. You. Actually, it's not me. It's the uh, the BSM team has a gift for all of you. So let me pull it up. And it's going to be some how to's um, that you can take with you. It's a QR code. So you might want to pull out your camera. And here we go. I'll hold it up for a couple seconds so that you can screenshot or scan that code. And then you'll be able to have your how to um, for the application process. Thank you, BSM, for providing that for us. I'm going to come back here and I will leave my information and let anyone ask any last minute questions before. Um, Stephanie, do you have anything that you would like to share before we go? trying to find like the chat box. I'm not sure where I can share my email. Um, but if you are interested in staying connected, you can always go to the University of San Francisco webpage. Um, and we're there um, as well for any information. And I am a transfer admission counselor as well. So if we have transfer students, please feel free um, to let me know if you have any questions or reach out to our USF team. Awesome. And maybe Tiffany, if she's on, she can put your info in the chat as well. Of or course. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> yeah. Just, just putting that out there. Whoever's on there that can share that. Hannah, any last minute words? I was going to say USF has a booth. So please visit their booth. <laughs> and Stephanie's going to be there too. <laughs> I'm plugging for everyone. Now, I, I was going to say uh, for those of you that are on this chat that are interested or you know, you're, you're high school students or parents that are interested in transferring to Malibu, our Seaver College booth is there today. Michael is the representative. Please reach out to him because the application deadlines and the admission requirements, letters of recommendations are totally different from the Grazavio School. So I highly encourage that you reach out to Michael today at the Seaver booth so that your questions can be answered. Thank you. Fantastic. So just to close it out, I've gotten a request to show the QR code. So I will leave that up there once I say goodbye. Um, and then the one quick question came in about if Pepperdine focuses more heavily on letters of recommendation and essay or grades. And it's going to depend on what program and if it's a graduate or an undergrad program. So it just depends. Sorry, that's not a very straightforward question. I mean, answer, but my my one thing that I would say is just reach out to the advisor for that program and then they can give you specifics and you can do that in the booths. So <laughs> that's a great segue into go check out the virtual booths. Thank you for joining this session. I'll put up the QR code and a huge thank you to Stephanie and Hannah for sharing their tips and we'll see you all in the booths. Thank you. Bye.